H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, um, so let me quickly revise for two minutes what are the topics we discussed so far. So in the first class, uh, uh, we discussed about uh, where do we find the C-sharp, whether installed or not. And in the second, I mean, also we discussed how to uh, write program in the notepad. We discussed what is a namespace, what is a class, what is console and write line. And also we saw like how to compile um, C-sharp code using, not using notepad and command prompt. So we have used CSC space file name dot CS and uh, once the file is compiled, it will generate the C exe file. So we have seen, uh, we have learned that and also uh, in the second class we learned about what are the data types that are available in C sharp and uh, so we have different data types like uh, int, float, double, decimal, all those things. So let me quickly ask some questions for 5 minutes and then we will continue with the topics for today. So, so let me open Windows or Notepad. So, what is the biggest? So, question for all of you. Just ping me. Uh, just ping me in the chat window. We'll continue the questions for five minutes. Uh, okay. So, what is the range for byte? Just ping me in the chat window. Your answer. Range for byte data type. Uh, okay. So, I'm seeing few responses. Yeah. So the range for byte, the range for byte is uh, 0 to 55. So just uh, um, so we saw that byte requires one byte of memory, one byte of memory. So if you want to, if you convert this to bits, uh, the biggest number uh, is 1111, 1111. So when you convert this to decimal, the and the value will be 255. So that is the reason for the range for byte is 0 to 255. So uh, in the assignments which I have received, uh, uh, I have I have added a table like um, uh, whether whether which data type can store negative numbers or not. So I think um, I think some of you have uh, uh, got confusion. So let me let me make it clear now. So byte can cannot store negative values, and uh, other than that, wh whatever you see. Uh, Bobby, can you please uh, keep yourself on mute? I just muted you. Okay. S so, okay. So for if you want to store negative values as well, so uh, if you want to store negative values as well, so we have to we can use int, flow int, and uh, and also we have short data type, long data type. So all this, so int short long and we have one more thing s byte so signed byte so signed byte so these are the values these are the data types which can store negative values as well so so s byte is signed byte and integer short and long these are the data types which can store negative values as well and the data types which have which can store only positive values is byte byte is uh, byte is for one byte and it stores only positive numbers and other data types which starts with u int u int is unsigned integer and u long unsigned long and also we have uh, u short so these are all uh, these are all mean unsigned integer that means this only stores positive numbers so so remember if someone asks you whether u long stores negative numbers no it will not store negative numbers byte store negative numbers no it will not store negative numbers so these data types are primarily intended for storing positive numbers and these data types are intended for positive as well as negative numbers. So okay, so next question. So what is the system type name for float? What is the system name for float? Yeah, I see one response. Yeah. Yeah, it is uh, system.single. 
so uh, for those who have missed the uh, previous classes please go through the recordings i have shared with all of you and again if you have not received the uh, uh, recordings for the previous two videos again just drop a test email to me my mail id i have just pinged all of you so okay so i suggest all of you to please start practicing and be uh, um, so be up to the up to the mark every day so that uh, the current class will be very interactive for you and also in the class please keep all the things aside uh, don't focus on the class for this one hour or one and a half hour or whatever whatever time we, we discuss please focus on the class okay so uh, that is about data types so now yeah for float for float the system type name is system dot single system dot single okay so now um, this is uh, this is about data types and uh, okay so with that we'll get started with uh, we'll get started with operators in C sharp okay so so let me open PDF uh, PPT file uh, which I have PPT so I have this operators uh, the subject saying operators in C so operators are are common in all the programming languages so now we'll be focusing on what are the types of operators we have so let's see so we have arithmetic operators we have relational operators we have logical operators bitwise operators shift operators and we have unary operators so these are important so uh, of all the operators which we have th the important operators uh, which which will be focused in interviews or our question and answers is um, uh, this one which is unary operators uh, so plus plus and minus minus we see we have like post increment being pre increment uh, uh, like that we have different types and also the the one which is confusing here is this one modulo division so let's focus on all the operators for today and uh, and also we'll we'll continue uh, time permits on control structures which we have okay so now uh, arithmetic operators so for example if you declare a variable like this so so now let me open this so int a and int a is equal to 5 and int b is equal to 10 so now in C in C and if I'm writing C is equal to a plus B so this is an operator so plus is an operator which is which is uh, which which I have applied for both a and B so I don't think I need to explain what is the result for C because addition operator plus is for addition so a plus B which is 5 plus 10 so C value will become C value will become 15 and if I write console dot write line C, I'll get the output as 15 so so just quick I'll quickly write the program for you and then and then we'll try to correct it to for learning all them all the operators so what I'll do now I'll go to my computer and uh, I'll go to D drive h2k and I'm going to create new new text document and I'm going to or or let me do this way so delete it so what I'll do is Windows R notepad and I write the program here so I just open notepad using system which is a namespace class hello uh, class numbers or uh, let me put uh, let me put D types data types so operators operators learn so I'm learning operators so I just gave name the class as operators learn and inside this I need to have public static void main So I'll explain in the next classes we'll see what is public static and what is void so for now for now remember the syntax and then here I'm going to declare variable int a comma b comma c and then here I'm assigning the value of a is equal to 5 and and b is equal to 10 so I want to add a and b so I, I need to store it in c so c is equal to a plus b now I'm going to print the value of c so I need to write console dot write line so right line is a method which is present in console class right line C okay so I'm done with this so this is so I just declared uh, three variables and I assigned the value for a as 5 and b equal to 10 and then I'm writing c is equal to a plus b so I'm just printing the value of c which is 15 so let me save it file save as I'm selecting all files and I'm selecting the path d colon h2k and here I'm giving the name as um, D types uh, operators 
operators learn dot cs cs is for c sharp okay i saved it so now if you see here uh, in this i have uh, operators dot operators learn dot cs so let me try to compare this with command prompt so windows r cmd so i just open the command prompt and then i need to go to uh, d colon i need to go to cd h2k so now to compile my operators learn cs file i need to give csc space operators learn dot cs so now i'm compiling my c sharp file so once it is compiled i'm just ex i'm just giving so if you see here it is compiling and it is compiled the moment it is compiled we can notice that an exe file has been created here so we can notice that exe file has been created now to execute and see the output i need to give operators learn so i can see that the output is 15 now so this is what uh, is the expected output i just compile it under the output so now so like this this is addition so like this if you put a minus b the answer will be minus 5 because 5 minus 10 that is minus 5 and like this a star b is, uh, so we don't have uh, for multiplication we don't have into mark here so we'll be using star mark for multiplication so a star b indicates 5 into 10 that is c value will be 50 so if i want to run this again i need to click on file save i need to save it and i go i need to go to command prompt i need to compile this again so every time when i make some changes for the code i have to save it and then i need to come i need i need to compile it again okay so so now i need to execute it so to execute to execute it i need to just give the operators learn so i'll give operators learn i can see that the output is uh, i can see that the output is 50 now okay so now we'll go to learn we'll we'll get started with the other operators so so plus minus star divided by so divided by is also very straightforward for example when you write 10 by 2 when you write 10 by 2 the answer is the answer is 5 so uh, when you write uh, when you write 6 by 3 the answer is 2 so so divided by is also straightforward now let's try to focus on what is modulo division so anyway uh, 6 plus 3 9 or uh, 6 minus 3 3 i don't need to i i am sure i don't need to explain till here okay so now the last one modulo division we'll try to focus on that so 5 by 2 actually when you put 5 by 2 the answer is 2.5 but since uh, 5 and 2 both are um, both are integers the answer will be 2 it will be rounded off to 2 and 12 by 2 uh, anyway it is 6 and here if you mention like this 5.0 divided by 2.0 then the answer will be 2.5 so so if you mention 5 by 2 you will not get uh, uh, that you will not get decimal value you'll only get two because these two are integers anyway we'll discuss with some example on this later so this is about division operator and uh, modulo division so can you guys tell me what is the answer for 12 modulo 5 for those who have attended my demo class might not might have known this so what is the answer for 12 modulo 5 okay i see one response i see a couple of responses so others please uh, please reply in the chat window please uh, please do respond in the chat window so that will make the class interactive so so 12 modulo 5 so what is the answer for 12 modulo 5 so let me show you how to how to calculate this so 12 modulo 5 you have to write like this so so you have to write 5 here so whatever you see here in the after modulo you have to write here 5 and then you have to write here 12 and then and then you have to um, so 5 twos are so let me show you here 5 twos are 10 and the remainder is 2 that is the answer so for example if you see 7 modulo for example if you see 7 modulo 6 you need to write 6 here and you need to write 7 here and you need to put here 6 1 6 and the reminder is 1 so the value of 7 modulo 6 is 1 so let me explain one more thing for example if you are seeing 13 modulo modulo 2 so all you need to do is you need to write 2 here and you need to write 13 here 
and you have to write two six are twelve and the remainder is one so the answer is one so like this you have to calculate the modulo so modulo division will give the remainder for you okay next question what is the value of 11 modulo 12 anyone knows this 11 modulo 12 anyone do you have a guess for the value of 11 modulo 12 I got one response saying zero. I got other response saying zero. Okay, so how do I need to write? So in the previous slide we saw that um, first I need to write five, so I need to write five here, and then I need to write twelve here. So in this case I need to write like this. So I need to write twelve here, and then I need to write eleven here. So twelve, how many times we get? So twelve zeros are zero, and what is the remainder? Twelve zero zero, and the remainder is eleven. So so when this value numerator is smaller than denominator, so this is called numerator. This is called numerator, and this is called denominator. So when this value is smaller than denominator, the answer is the same numerator itself eleven. So the answer is eleven here. So see now when I put here twelve. So 12 once 12 which exceeds that so I cannot put 12 ones are 12 because I need to I need to put smaller value so I need to write 12 zeros are 0 and the remainder is 11 so when numerator is smaller than denominator modulo division will return the numerator okay so so let me ask questions so so now let me open notepad okay so questions to all of you so what is the value for what is the value for 9 modulo 3 all of you please respond to me in the chat window what is the value for 9 modulo 3 please respond in the chat window 9 modulo 3 okay uh, I'm not seeing from response from few like I'm not seeing response from Jesse or I'm not seeing the response from Parimala so Parimala are you there I'm not seeing response from yeah so please uh, use this time for practicing okay so all of you are correct the value of 9 modulo 3 the value of 9 modulo 3 is 0 so all of you are correct okay yeah thanks Jesse yeah so now what is the answer for next question what is the answer for um, 15 modulo 7 answer me in the chat window what is the answer for 15 modulo 7 okay perfect okay so thank you so all of you are correct so then now next question what is the answer for what is the answer for 15 modulo 18 okay good so good so if the numerator is smaller than denominator as I said the answer is uh, the answer is numerator itself so which is 15 so um, so so no, uh, yeah perfect so the answer is 15 so last question so so let me ask this way so what is the answer for um, 12 modulo 1 okay so all of you respond in the chat window 12 modulo 1 12 modulo 1 okay so I see a cup few wrong answers so let me explain uh, so it is very simple so all you need to do is you need to write 1 here and then you need to write 12 here and and what you need to write here so 1 into how many times so 1 12 sir so 12 and and what is answer 0 is answer so until I see all the answers are correct, I'll be asking questions continuously. So what is the answer for what is the answer for 18 modulo 8? What is the answer for 18 modulo 8? Please respond in the chat window. I see one answer wrong. It is not zero. It is not zero. So you need to write like this so you need to write like this 8 and you need to write here 18 and then you need to write 8 to 16 and the answer is 2 2 is the answer okay so yeah so 
so i think we are clear with the uh, modulo division so we'll go to we'll go to the other operators which we have so that is about arithmetic operators so we just covered about arithmetic operators we saw addition subtraction multiplication which is star mark here division and modulo division so hope all of you are clear with arithmetic operators so now let's go to the next one which is relational operators so relational operators will tell you the relation between two numbers so for example so for example 5 greater than 3 so it so here it, the operator is telling the relation between 5 and 3 so so let's try to focus on here so if you see here so 5 not equal so we will tell like 5 not equal to 3 so this is a not equal operator so this is explanatory mark and then equal to will is for not equal to 5 not equal to 3 this is 5 greater than 3 3 less than 5 5 greater than or equal to 5 and 9 less than or equal to 12 so these are all the operators which are used for telling the relation between two numbers whether the number is greater than the second number first number less than second number so these are all relational operators and one more thing which you have to remember is this one is very important we don't use if you want to check whether the two numbers are equal or not we'll use here if inside if condition we have to use double equal to to check whether the both the numbers are equal or not a double equal to b will not use single equal to so for example let's go to our program which we have and we'll come back to this again so here in 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 our program so let me close this so we have written the program operators learn so here i want to i i want to check whether the value of a and b both are equal or not so if both are equal i have to print equal so in this case I'll anyway explain if operator if uh, if condition again so you need to write here if a is equal to b which is wrong so inside if condition you have to write double equal to so so if you write a is equal to b that will assign the value of a to b so you should not write like this so I repeat again inside if condition you have to use double equal to so now I inside this I will write equal and and I'll write else so else I'll write here I'll write here console dot right line I'll write not equal okay so please pl please focus on the class so I'll save it and then let me compile it let me compile it here so how to compile CSS space file name dot CS okay I am getting a warning because uh, I'm not using uh, I'm not using C anywhere because I have declared it but I'm not using C anywhere that means I'm wasting how many bytes here how many bytes I'm wasting here what is the size for integer what is the size for integer how many bytes in integer yeah for integer the size is I see response only from two of you yeah for integer the size is four bytes so if I just declare it and if I'm not using it I'm wasting four bytes unnecessarily so that is the reason when I compile I'm getting a warning the variable C is declared but never used if I don't want to use it compiler is telling remove it if you don't want to use it don't keep it so now if I save it I'll not get this warning again so now let me compile it again so I'm not getting any warning so last time when I compiled I got a warning saying like the variable C is declared but never used but when I remove the variable I compiled I, I didn't get any warning okay so now uh, I just compiled it so what could be the answer now uh, what could be the output now yeah the answer is not equal because anyway 10 and 5 both are not equal so so operators learn so operators learn the answer is not equal perfect so so this is how you normally check for equal to equal to equal to I repeat you have to use double equal so this is about relational operators the only thing which you should keep in mind is double equal to and not equal to other than other than this anyway these are similar to mathematics 5 greater than 3 3 less than 5 okay so hope you are clear with relational operators equal to check condition we need to check with double equal okay so we just covered on um, uh, arithmetic operators and we also discussed on relational operators so we'll go to the next one which is logical operators 
so logical operators are are three we have logical and and we have logical or and we have logical not logical not so let's try to understand this so so logical not we have already seen while checking for not equal to so this is for not uh, not the symbol is uh, the symbol is this one this one this is for the explanatory mark is a symbol for not equal so so that is fine that we already saw that and logical and or or for example if you want to check two conditions whether a equal to 5 and b is equal to 8 okay so let me ask a question so what is an even number so I want to check whether uh, the value a is even number or not okay so I want to check whether a is an even number or not so how can I and how can I check whether a is even number 5 is even number or odd number okay so 5 is odd number so if I want to check whether the number how do you say whether the number is even or odd normally so yeah I have to write a condition here I have to write a condition here if a modulo if a modulo 2 if the number is divisible by 2 that is an even number so if a modulo 2 equal to 0 I have to write here even number okay so and else so for example let's take some even numbers all the even numbers are divisible by 2 so the remainder should be 0 so that is the reason why I'm using if a modulo 2 equal to 0 I'm just printing even number else I'm just printing odd number so so all these times we are assigning the value here we're not reading from the keyboard so we'll see that later how to read the values from the keyboard okay so this is the condition to check whether the code is even number or not so let me save it so the answer should be odd number so let me let me compile it again for compiling csc space file name csc space o p r a t o r s okay so i have just compiled it and then i am executing it operators learn dot cs so what is wrong here what should i give here for 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 compiling for executing what should i give here i should not give cs here i should only give operators learn for executing so i'm seeing odd number yeah only file name okay so so now i am i got a question from someone saying like this can be done in the loop right from 1 to 100 uh, what exactly uh, you want so now you can unmute yourself and you can ask me uh, so what is that you mean by 1 to 100 hello um, so now Okay. We can, we can <coughs> write away with one condition, but we can loop it as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we can write. Uh, so, what is your intention? So, you want to print the even numbers between uh, 1 to 100? 1 to 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to print even numbers between 1 to 100, we can write a for loop, uh, which we'll be discussing in some time. Right. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Fine. Okay. Okay, that's a good question. So, uh, we'll discuss in uh, while discussing loops, uh, I'll explain that again. So, okay. So now, um, so I have one question. So, so I have a question for all of you. So this will tell me whether the number is even number or not. So, but my requirement is uh, the number should be divisible by two, and the num. I want to check whether the number is divisible by two and five. So I have a requirement like this. So I have a requirement like this to check uh, check whether the number is divisible by by 2 and 5 so I have a requirement like this so in that case what I need to do is I need to write I need to write a modulo 2 equal to 0 I need to write and I need to write and operator which is for logical and and I need to write I need to check whether a modulo 5 is equal to 0 okay 
so for my requirement i have to use and operator so i have to use a modulo 2 is equal to 0 and a modulo 5 equal to 0 i need the answer as yes and i need the answer here as no so now i'm giving 8 here so what will be the answer now i'm giving 8 here what is the answer now so what will i get now yes or no yeah i will get i will get no because 8 is divisible by 2 but it is not divisible by 5 so in when you are using and condition both should be true when you are using and condition both should be true otherwise otherwise it will go to else okay so so that is about and condition so when you come back to here you can see that this is logical and a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 2 it will check for both the conditions so this is called whatever we see here so this is called truth table okay so now if you see here if this is true and this is true the answer is true the condition is true if both conditions are true the result is true if one of the condition is false the result is false here also this is true and this is false so the answer is false so if both are false also the answer is false so this is for and operator so so what i mean here is let me go back to my notepad and here if you see if if both these conditions are true then only this s yes will be printed otherwise it no will be printed so let me copy let me save it and then go to command prompt and then i'll compile it and i will execute it so the answer is no now now my requirement has got changed now check whether the number is divisible by 2 or 5 so i need to check whether this is divisible by 2 or is it divisible by 5 if it is divisible by any of that just display yes or else display no in that case i have to use or operator for or operator the symbol is pipe symbol like this this is the symbol two uh, two lines uh, which are actually there uh, above your enter we have that uh, pipe symbols okay so now now let me compile it so what could be the output now what what will be the answer now yeah the answer now is yes the answer now is yes because or means any one of the condition is true that will that will execute the that will execute that total condition will become true so a modulo 2 is 0 which is true or a modulo 5 which is false so true or false the result is true so this will print yes okay so let me save it so that is the reason why we have table here for or if it is not necessary that so this a is true first condition is true second condition is true the answer is true first condition is false but second condition is true even then the answer is true this is for or operator so here i have first condition true second condition false even then it's true but when both are false the result will be false so that is the difference between and operator and or operator okay so hope it is clear now uh, we just completed discussing on logical operators so so we discussed on arithmetic operators we discussed on relational operators we discussed on logical operators now we are going to discuss bitwise operators okay so bitwise operators are very simple provided you know how to convert the numbers to decimal very very simple very easy concept bitwise operators so let's try to explain that let's try to understand this so so here i want to know what is the value see uh, logical and we'll have double ampersand but here we have only single ampersand logical and we'll have like this ampersand ampersand but here for bitwise operators we have only single ampersand single ampersand this symbol is called ampersand this symbol is called ampersand okay so now i want to know what is the answer for 6 and 3 6 and 3 so what i need to do is i need to convert 6 i need to convert 6 to binary so i need to convert 6 to binary which is here 110 how do i convert 6 to binary i'll write like this i'll write like this six two two threes are and i'll write zero here and then two ones i'll write remainder one so i need to write like this so i got one one zero now i'll also convert three to binary so i'll need to convert three to binary 
so which is 3 here I need to write and I need to write 2 2 ones remainder is 1 I need to write like this so total if I want to put in 3 digits the answer is 0 1 1 so I have written here 0 1 1 now and means both should be true so 1 and 0 because I have 0 here answer is 0 1 and 1 answer is 1 0 and 1 answer is 0 and means both should be 1 if both are 1 then only the result will be 1 otherwise it will be 0 so very simple so this is for and operator so answer is 0 1 0 convert this to decimal so how do you convert 0 into 2 power 0 and 1 into 2 power 1 and 0 into 2 square so this is how we normally convert uh, this to so we get here 2 so the answer is 6 and 3 the answer is 2 so just convert to binary and then put respect uh, uh, for and operator so let me explain one more value then you will get some idea windows or notepad I'm going to explain for 7 and 9 okay so for 7 the binary value is so let me let me do what is for 7 so 2 um, 2 3's are 6 the answer is 1 and 2 2 1's 1 so I need to write like this so uh, so for 7 the binary value is 1 1 1 okay for 9 what is the value for 9 so let me calculate for 9 so 2 to 4's are and 0 sorry to force 8 and 1 is the remainder and 2 to 2's are 0 and again 2 1's 0 so the answer is 1 0 0 1 so 1 double 0 1 so I need to write here 1 double 0 1 so I cannot do like I need to put 0 here just to make sure that both are in the same so now what I need to do here so I need to write like this and here I need to put 0 and 1 is 0 1 and 0 is 0 1 and 0 is again 0 if you are using and both should be true otherwise 0 so 1 and 1 is 1 and then now you need to convert this to binary decimal so anyway you will get uh, 0 0 0 1 the decimal value is also 1 so 7 and 9 the answer is 1 so let's try to do that in the program so let's go to the C sharp this program and I am going to print console dot write line I'm going to print 7 and 9 here so let me save it let me compile it let me run it so so what is the answer we're getting we're getting one okay so questions for questions for you let me see who will tell first so what is the answer for what is the answer for five and seven let me see who will tell first what is the answer for five and seven please uh, calculate and tell me the answer for five and seven I need the answer in decimal you should not answer me binary you should tell me in decimal I see very few responses uh, you should answer me in, in decimal not in binary I see very few responses I see only three responses See, all you need to do is uh, you need to write for five. For five, it is one zero one. For seven, it is triple one. Now you need to write like this, and you need to tell one and zero. One and one is one. Zero and one is zero, and one and one is one again. So when you convert this to decimal, the answer is five. Very simple. So I, I see only response from very few. Uh, I want to see the response from all of you. So so now uh, the next question. So let me say, let me see who will tell first the correct answer. So eleven and twelve. Eleven and twelve. What is the answer? 
I want to see the response from all of you. So please, uh, please practice on this. What is the answer for 11 and 12? I got one answer from Bavik uh, saying that the answer is 8. So, Mauna also I got the answer is 8. Okay, so let's try to verify what is the answer for now. So, for 11, what is the binary value for 11? So, I got all the responses for 8. I'm not seeing the response from a couple of you. So, I don't see any response from one attendee. So, so Parimala, you are there? I'm not hearing any response uh, so just a second also I didn't see the response from Jesse now okay okay so let me try to come uh, let uh, as I got the response from all of you correctly so I'm not going to explain this so the answer is uh, let me verify 11 and 12 what is the answer so let me go to my C sharp program and I'll just change it to 11 and 12 so all of you have replied as 8 so let's see whether it's 8 or not I just saved it go to the command prompt compile it csc space file name and then execute it okay the answer is 8 you are all perfectly right so the answer is 8 okay so now uh, so now let's go back to uh, so this is about uh, bitwise operators uh, I'll be explaining this too. So I don't think I need to explain or or is also something similar to and that is one or zero is one one or one is one zero or one is one Okay, so this is something like we saw in the previous slide So if any one is true like one or zero is one zero or one is also one so you want me so this is clear right or operator is clear right bitwise or Please respond in the chat window if it's clear just tell clear or else not clear so yeah so I, I guess our operator is very clear so if any one is one any one value is one that will be one so I'm not going to explain the third one provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.